Hi friends, it's Becky and it is that time of month where I do one of my favorite activities and that is to take a color palette that I was inspired by from one of my bead boxes and I paint a painting using the same color palette with watercolors. Um, I've done several of these already. I am going to link my playlist if you want to go look at some of the other ones that I've done. And this bead box that I was inspired by is the most recent bargain bead box, the one for April, where we had all of these arboreally inspired charms and the just the blooming trees. And I'm just going with that theme, honestly, for my painting as well. So I pulled out some of the beads that I want to work with and I've got them laid out here. I've got this beautiful Malaysian jade in this light, wisteria color purple and there's this gorgeous mineral violet it is my favorite um mgram color actually and so i'm using mgram watercolors for this i'm using the mineral violet for that color and then i've got quinacridone rose it can be really really bright but it it mellows out to this really gorgeous sort of color that i think will go really well for my rose quartz beads that we're going to be using. And then we've got these gorgeous beads with, that have this light, light yellow with gold undertones. And so I'm gonna be using this nickel azo yellow for that one. And I was thinking of painting three different trees. One is a wisteria, the next is a red bud, and then the other is, um, oh shoot, what is the name of that tree? <laughs> Why can't I remember it? Well, anyway, I'll 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 put a link to or I'll I'll put the name of the tree in in the description since it's escaped my brain right now. But I know what it looks like, so we'll we'll look at that. And then there's some other colors that I'm pulling from the um M Graham palette to kind of fill in with some of these other colors too. There was uh one of the greens that came in the box had some blue highlights and so I've got some ultramarine. I haven't decided yes or no if I'm absolutely going to be using the ultramarine in the painting. I may use it for some sky color but I also since wisteria redbud and this other um it's they've got golden buds um when they've got the the things it's golden flowers and that's actually the name of the the thing is golden something but I can't remember the name of it anyway they all will grow or are native to um, Texas I thought I might do some blue bonnets in the field but we'll see how I feel when I get to that part if I'm going to be dropping some blue bonnets into the field or not but if I do that I am going to be also using some of the dioxazine violet which reminds me a lot of this purple that came in the bead box so we can do that and then I've got some assorted greens I'm probably going to be mixing these together um, greens in watercolor are a lot like garlic or vanilla in cooking or baking where you measure with your soul and so greens you're going to mix with your soul on those so it probably won't be this straight color. It may be little bits of it dropped in with this and we may be greening things up a little bit more with some of the permanent green. But we'll see when we get there because I might be doing some grass stuff. And then we need to have a nice brown for our branches that hold our tree leaves and our um, tree uh, flowers. So I've got a raw umber color that we're going to be using with that. We've got sap permanent and that's the green over there. So that's the colors that I'm going to be painting with. And then for that brown color, I thought we'd pull a branch into our design by using this copper color of beading wire. I also have some 22 gauge wire that I'll be using probably for some of this beading design. And I'm definitely, definitely going to be using this pendant and this clasp. And I think I'm going to do a front closure necklace. I am also bringing in some other assorted greens. These, This was just a little mix of bicones that I got from Beadbox Bargains. I got it a while ago, though, so I don't know if it's still 
at their store but that's the the number in case they do still have some of that and then i've got some bead caps and spacers we'll use those and since i'm going to be stringing this i've got some crimps i'm going to use my magical crimpers for this and then i've got my assorted beading tools that i like to use for things my chain nose pliers my flush cutters for cutting wire and some round nose pliers for bending wire. So these are the things that I'm going to be using when we get around to the jewelry part. And so usually what I like to do, just moving that out of the way, usually what I like to do is do the painting first. That way, since there's always part of a watercolor painting where you want to wait for the paint to dry before you move on and do any more detail work. I'm going to be doing the first part of the painting and then setting this aside and letting that dry. And then while this is drying, I'm gonna pull out my beadboard and we're gonna do some making of some jewelry while that's drying. And then when I'm done with making the jewelry, I can come back to my painting and I can do my details and I can do my finishing up. So I've told you about the paints that I'm using. For my tools, I have a couple of brushes. I'm probably only going to be using this one for a little bit of a wash, not for very much. It is one of the fly down brushes. These are mop brushes. So this number doesn't relate to any other like watercolor type brush numbers. It's closer to like around seven or around 10 here on its tip. And then I've got the zero, which is closer to like around six. But again, I love these fly down brushes because they are acrylic. And so you don't have to worry about the wood splitting if you accidentally leave them in your water. And then I've got a um, Princeton Heritage Round Zero that has really fine for any fine details that I need to do. Um, whoop. Welp. You know what? This happens and it's fine. You know why? Because we can have some flowers or something in that part of our thing. Ugh. Ugh. Mistakes happen and that's fine. But let me show you. I've already put some pigment and water in here for our um, flowery bits on our trees. And I have a natural sea sponge, which I've already dampened, that we're going to be doing for part of that as well. And I'm just dripping water all over this. And that's okay, because we're gonna be wetting a lot of this paper anyway for that. And as far as the paper that I'm using, it is 100% cotton latent watercolor paper. And this is cold press paper, but it has a really, really, I don't know if you can see the tooth on it. It's a really smooth tooth. It's like halfway between most cold press watercolors and hot press as far as like the roughness of it goes. So it's not, um, it's not, uh, it doesn't um, obscure details. It'll show details a little bit better than others, which, you know be bad could be good depends on what you want out of your watercolor so I'm gonna grab my pencil real quick and I'm just gonna sketch in a few lines to tell me where to stop with things I'm thinking that I want to have kind of an arch with my wisteria branches coming down to frame the top of this picture and then we're going to have, and this is just really rough, the red bud. And I don't know if you've seen a red bud, but it's like it's got the, the trunk and then the branches splay out from there like a, a hand that's wide like that. So I'm just doing a real quick sketch of where that's going to be. And then we'll have this other tree that I cannot remember the name of, but it has a solid trunk and then the branches go out a lot 
they travel. The branches travel on that kind of a tree. And the branches on a wisteria travel a lot too. So I'm just imagining that this is a view from sitting maybe underneath a wisteria tree. And then you've got that coming and then you've got these over here. And I think what I'm gonna do is draw myself a little horizon line along here so that I can have like some grass, maybe a few bushes, and then we can have a foreground with some flowers. And I, we're gonna have some pink flowers and some yellow flowers there too, it looks like. But yeah, so that's, that's about where I'm gonna want that um, compositionally. So let me grab my sea sponge and I'm just gonna dip part of it, really. Really needs to be a little less damp. I'm gonna dip part of this sea sponge in my purple color. This is the mineral violet, so I've got some on there. And then I'm just gonna dab with that pigment onto the paper where I want and I want to leave some white spaces up along the top and this is going to be the the base color. I'm going to absorb a little bit of this because I don't want it too wet initially. This is just a paper towel. Super handy to have when you're doing watercolor. That way I'm using my round six now to just dab in a little bit of extra color that can move and travel along these clusters while it dries because up along here I'm going to want to put in a little bit of greenery right So we've got that. And I'm going to pick a different spot on my sponge and I'm going to dip it in the pink for my red bud. And I'm gonna have that over there. So I'm putting in the flowers first for all of these. And now let's pick a different spot and dip it in my gold color. It's the Nicolazzo yellow. This one usually has more of a clumps of its flowers when you look at them that way. So that's about what that's going to look like for my flowers. Let's get some yellows or some greens sorted out. I'm going to start with the sap green. I'm going to lay it down here. Add just a little bit of that permanent green. Take the mop, kind of spread some water.
around down here. And it's okay if I leave a few blank white spaces because I can come back in with those and add flowers to our little meadow. So I'm just gonna drop in some greens. Leaving some space there for trunks to come in later with the brown. I'm not going to be drawing the trunks yet because I don't want to have this bleed too much. I'm actually going to grab some of this Nicolazzo yellow and just kind of drop it in a little bit right here where the greens are. In a couple of these spots. Sometimes you don't always have like bright vibrant green in a wildflower area. You've got some bits of grass that are a little bit drier, you know? And maybe you've got some darker greens in there. toning down this green with kind of a reddish earth pigment. This will spread out and blooms will happen as this is drying and you have different rates of drying between different colors, different sections. All right, so that's just giving me a little more texture and there's some blank spots and I want those blank spots because I am gonna fill those in later when I get to that part of my painting. So, so far we have some wisteria, we have some red bud, we have some mixing going on there, and I don't think I'm mad about that. That's kind of, kind of cool actually. But I think I might lift some of this. I'll go back in and do some dots of uh, pink later to take that that place. Let's just pull off some spots of color here near the front. And all I'm doing is I'm dragging dragging this brush. It's a mostly dry brush clean, mostly dry brush. I'm dragging it through some of these wet spots like this and then tapping it on my paper towel. It's lifting some spots because I can come back in with some blue and purple. Into those spots after this dries. Yeah, I have decided that I'm definitely going to be 
doing a few more of those. It's too wet. You can use brushes to lift. You can also use paper towels to lift. I think that's going to be good for now. I'm going to set this aside, let it dry. And after we make our jewelry, we'll come back and we can add in some more of our details. All right, so painting is drying. So we'll get back to it in a little bit. But first, we're going to make some jewelry. And the first thing I'm going to do is take this bale off of the pendant here. Um, it's a fine bale, but I am not going to be using it. So I'm just going to bend that off of there. There we go. And I am going to use a jump ring. Let me grab one of those to attach this pendant directly to the clasp because I want this to be a front clasp necklace, something that shows off both the pendant and the closure. So I'm going to connect those and then I'm going to start stringing some of the beads on the beading wire. And I've got all of my beads moved out of the way so that we can get started on that. These are all the same beads that were out earlier. I just moved them out of the way so we could get right into beading once we're here. So let me go ahead and open up a jump ring. And you do that by holding on to one side and then twisting the jump ring open. You don't pull it open, you just twist it. And sliding that. And I think I might need to open this a little bit wider because that's a very thick piece of wire right there. And that lower part. Now I could, and I thought about for a minute, use the craft wire and make a little connector between these two using like one of these beads but I don't think I'm gonna do that it was an option that passed through my head and then I decided that I'm just gonna do some easy things today just feeling it and I was gonna do this painting yesterday um, but I did not get around to it things got a little crazy at home. I had to take care of some things and I had honestly overplanned my day and my weekend. And I tend to do that sometimes. I, I overcommit to things and then I get overwhelmed. So I did what I could yesterday. And today I am doing the painting that I said I was going to do yesterday, but I'm doing it today. Um, and we'll, we'll just do this as it comes and when I'm ready. All right, so all I'm doing right now is I pulled off some beading wire. I pull off about 25 inches. This is probably a lot more than I'm going to need for this. So I've got some beading wire and I'm going to attach one end of my beading wire to the other end of that clasp because if I'm beading with this and I'm moving things around, it's just going to be a little unwieldy. I could start here or I could start there. It doesn't matter. It's going to be a little bit easier for me, I think, if I wait till the end to attach it to this end. So I'm going to attach it to this end and then we'll start beading um, with our beads and make a little design. I'm going to attach it by putting my crimp tube on my wire, putting the wire through the end of this toggle, bending the wire back, and putting it through the crimp tube again. Now that isn't what attaches it. It just makes it so that when I pull my crimper out, 
it's ready to go. And if you've never seen a magical crimper, it's my favorite way of crimping because it leaves a nice little smooth crimp bead. You don't have to put a crimp cover on it. And it does that by using this concavity on the inside to smush all the edges down on a crimp bead. And it only works, this particular size of magical crimper only works with the two by two crimp tube. But you center it right there in that concavity. You give a little smush and it smushes down just the edges. You still have that round part in the middle. And then you rotate it and smush it from a different angle. And then you rotate it and smush it from a different angle and smush it from a different angle. And you keep going around and around until you've smoothed out all of those corners, all of those rough edges. And you have a little crimp bead. So that's the reason I like using it, and that's why it's my favorite way of crimping. So now that I've got that done, I'm going to start sliding some beads on here. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a green bead. And it's going to be one of these guys here. And then one of these spacers. These spacers have all these nubbly bits on them. So you get a little bit of a texture on that. So you've got the spacer and then I'm just gonna grab three of one of my colors of beads and two of the green bicones and I'm just going to have a little section that is flower color bead, green bicone, flower color bead, green bicone, and flower color bead. And then I'm going to pop another spacer on like that. And I'm going to put this guy in here, one of these dark purple ones, and another rondelle. These rondelles have a very large hole, I don't know if you guys have noticed, and then a spacer. And then I will repeat that again with the second color. Three of those guys. And I'm just grabbing the random bicones. They don't have to be the same color. They can be if you want. I'm doing them randomly because sometimes you have leaves that are totally different colors on the same tree. And, you know, there's variations in nature. That's how it works. Okay. And I'm going to do another little section that's the spacer, green bead, purple bead, green bead, and spacer. So it's basically going to be some color blocked sections with these little spaces in between, transitional spaces, liminal spaces. All right, and then the other color, next one. There we go. Just wanted some variation in color between these three. And then two bicones. 
to go between them. And I'm going to repeat this until I get it to the length that I want. I am not going to worry about one side mirroring the other because I just don't feel like I want to devote my brain power to that right now. And I think it's going to look just fine with this type of a repeat all the way along. It doesn't need to echo. It doesn't need to mirror each other. It doesn't have to have symmetry. It'll have enough symmetry just in each of these sections being similar but different to the other sections. Sometimes I want a nice, complicated design, something that challenges me, something that makes me um, kind of uh, go past what I, uh, what I usually think I can do, um, push past my boundaries, expand my horizons. And sometimes I want a design that is easy, that is simple, that I can just do the same thing with a couple of different colors and come up with a really nice result at the end of it. And I am actually quite pleased with the way that this looks so far. And I think it's going to look great. All finished up and around the neck. And we've got plenty of these colors coming in, but it's not, it's not like the colors are, um, all blended in you still get that pop of the purple because they're all together and then you get a little pop of the yellow and they're all together but you've got those little bits of green in between like you do when you're looking at some trees with their blossoms and their little bits of green in between is going to be a very spring necklace. I'm, I'm here for the color blocking. I like it. Sometimes I like to distribute the color through the whole necklace, keep things even, but sometimes it's fun just to be like, okay, here's where the purple lives, and here's where the pink lives, and here's where the yellow lives, and uh, and let that be there. And now we've got our yellows. Oh! I, uh, it was bothering me that I couldn't remember the name of that one tree that I was going to be painting. It is a, um, I just had it. It just escaped my brain. Like I looked it up while the camera was off and it's like, hold on, wait a minute, my brain. golden trumpet that's it golden trumpet that's the name of the tree that i'm painting i knew it was golden something and 
I know there are a lot of other yellow flowered trees out there, but that's the one that I like the look of. So I'm going to have it growing in my little meadow that I made up with my head and I'm putting down on paper. All right, now, I don't know how much longer this needs to be. I'm going to check the length real quick when I get to the end of this one. I don't know if I'm going to need a repeat of all of these or maybe just a purple or maybe the... Oh yes, a repeat of all of those will definitely do. Let's, let's, let's add more beads. <laughs> more of these guys all right and adding more green to this box does not go amiss i actually i snagged one of the companion bundles they had them up and available for sale recently um, so I grabbed the first version. They also had a second version that was up for sale um, this weekend. But I don't know if it's still available. I haven't checked the site. Um, but my companion bundle should get here this week. So I can probably make more things with this. Um, I think one of the things, one of the challenges with this box is that there are so many beads in it. And there are so many... Um, like uh, pendants and findings and things that it's a little bit overwhelming trying to decide what you're going to make with it. There are too many choices almost. Um, this is not a problem that needs to be fixed. This is a me problem, not a not a the box problem. <laughs> but you know, it's one of those things where I just I I was like, I don't know what to make. I don't know what to make. I don't know what to make. And I finally decided that this is what I'm going to be making with it. And it pulls in all of these colors and it pulls in all of the, the pretty things that make me think of those trees. Um, I might do another project that just pulls in one of the colors that doesn't have all of them all together. Because I think that individually there are really gorgeous, lovely colors too. Um, but I am enjoying them being all together for a lot of these. Like we might just do a um, a rose quartz one. That that could that could happen. Something that's just rose quartzy. Especially since we have that rose quartz tree life pendant, I think it would be beautiful. And y'all know I love rose quartz. It is one of my favorite, favorite things ever. Oh, let's do the light, light greens. Some real light greens. There we go. I'm gonna check length real quick. All right, I think a little bit more, like just another, another purple section we'll do for length. Yep, another purple section, but I need to have my transition space first. So let's get that out there. So we also want to have time to make some earrings today. 
while we are making things. is definitely going to be long enough. Let me get the just a little close close bracket on that with one of these. Like that guy and where's I'm looking for my um I swear I got two of the uh, the crimps out, but it looks like I only got one. That's okay, because I, I know where more lives. All right, we can crimp the other end to this one. We can have ourselves a necklace with a front closure and lots of really, really pretty beads hanging from them. the wire through there, the crimp tube, and then through this, and then back through the crimp tube. Through a couple of beads just to, just so I'm not cutting the wire right next to the crimp. Um, usually you can, it's not a big deal. But if I don't have to, then I won't. All right, I'm just gonna curve this so that the, uh, so it's not too tight. Once it's crimped, I like my, I like my necklaces to have a little slink to them. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side and make sure that there's enough space between the crimp and the bead next to it. So I can get my crimper and get it all centered. And I might have to come at it from a couple of different angles and weird ways because I've got things on the wire on both sides instead of just on one side. But I should be able to go all around, get myself a nice little ball of crimp, and cut off my excess wire. All right. Now I've got the flowering trees, necklace, blooming branches. And I love that it's kind of asymmetrical. But still, both sides are like the same. They're just in opposite orders. In opposite directions. And then we've got this hanging down the front. Uh, beautiful. Pretty. I love it. It has all of the colors. Alright, so let's move this aside. And let's look at some earrings. I definitely want to use these little charms and I think I'm going to pop a uh, a jump ring on this and use some of that beading wire and make myself a little beaded hoop Like I've got my excess beading wire here from where what I was doing. This is another good reason to hang on to it because you can do these sorts of things with it. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one of each of these, two of each of these, one for each side. And cut 
couple of these bicones. Yep. All right, so let's put some this guy right in the middle. And then on each side of my beading wire, I'm going to put a purple bead. And then a bike cone. do this with craft wire too it doesn't have to be beading wire I'm just doing this because I have the beading wire leftover bits and then pink guy hold on I'm just gonna do the one side all at once and then one of these whoop side pink All right, let me get another Don't go anywhere. And I'll make one earring with y'all and then I will do the second earring later. So I just need one crimp tube this. I'm going to make it into a little bit of a drop shape by putting both ends of this beading wire through the crimp tube going in the same direction. And I'm going to just pull one of these wires so that one wire is longer than the other. And then the longer wire, I'm gonna bend back and put it through the crimp tube as well. Sometimes this takes a little bit of finagling to get the wires just right. Right. Okay. To pull this to make the loop a little bit smaller. So all right, there we go. It's gonna be about perfect. And now I'm gonna crimp all of my wires together and then rotate it and rotate it. Just keep going around and around until it's done crimping. And now I can cut off that wire that's sticking out of the top. And this wire sticking out of the bottom. And there, I used 
use leftover beading wire to make an earring to go with Go with my necklace. All right. So there we are. That's my necklace and an earring that I made with the bargain bead box for April. Blooming branches. And now let's finish our painting, our blooming branches painting that we started and we were letting dry up here. <laughs> Move my uh, that out of the way. Get this back here. So this is dried and it looks like we had some paint just kind of smear a little bit. You know what? That's going to be okay. I'm okay with a little bit of paint smearing, a little bit of things going awry. That is just fine. That is just fine. And now, I'm going to do something with the sky behind everything, because this is also going to take a little bit of time to dry. But while it's drying, I can work on the other parts of the uh, this painting. So I'm just going to lay down some water. A little bit of water. Right here in this empty section. I'm going to leave a little bit of space between this water that I'm laying down and the grass. I'm going to go up to but not over the tree blooms. Kind of paint around them with my water. It's just plain water right now. Get back here. Now leaving spaces where I have traced in those trunks so that this doesn't cover them. I'm going to move that out of the way and grab just a little bit of this blue. bit and I'm just going to drop it in a little bit just for like a suggestion of sky with some clouds behind the trees like I don't I don't want this to be like boom here's a sky I want it to be there might be a little bit a blue sky back there with some scattered clouds and maybe those clouds are where the trees are maybe they're not maybe just a little bit of it it's going to be right up here And maybe we're also going to have some very dark green. I'm going to take this green, which is that sap green. I'm going to pull a little bit of this brown out of the pan here. I'm going to mix it up here with this sap green. that. 
gonna lay a line right there along the edge of the horizon and make sure that it touches that water that I laid down because I want there to be a suggestion of trees back there in the background coming up into that area. Trees, bushes, They're all out of focus, and that's okay. So we've got some background done. And now, while this is drying, I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm going to take some of my greens up here to the top of this page. I'm going to use my round six and I'm going to start making some leaf shapes. leaf shapes gonna go? I don't know. They can go wherever I want them to go. I'm gonna try to get my hand out of that, my arm. Remember I left this bit up here, kind of blank, so we could do some leafy things. Alan is not a fan of leaves, unless it is the good grass outside. She's a fan of grass, amazingly enough, big fan of grass. We don't have any branches drawn in here yet, so I will just end up doing branches wherever these leaves go. That's why I can put them anywhere and have them go any way that I want them to go. Alright, let's do a couple leaves down here. Just making sure that I don't have... wet paper down there too. All right, over here off to the side. That's lovely. Now, I'm gonna pick up some more of this mineral violet color from this wash that I made earlier. I'm going to be Dropping in some darker spots. Oh, you are okay. It's one of the things about 
this is that I want there to be a little more dimension. When you look at Wisteria, they are these waterfalls of color. And there's no real dimension here because we don't have some darker bits of color. I want to leave the light bits too. I think that that's important. Sorry, I'm busy concentrating on painting, so there's not a lot of chatter going on while I'm doing that. I've got the window open, I've got, I can hear leaves blowing in a breeze. It's a lovely, lovely spring day here. spring day. This is making me think about this painting. Yesterday was such a gloomy rainy day that I think today's a much better day for painting flowers and blooms. All right, so we've got more wisteria. All right. Cleaning my brush so I can pick up more of the pink for our red buds. Do you remember how the colors kind of ran together? And I wanted to come back in and kind of re emphasize these colors. I don't want to go out too much into the the sky because then we'll have that. So we're gonna just put our pinks in right here. Again, we don't have our branches. We'll be filling that in in a little bit. I'm just dropping some of these into the ground, the base of our redbud tree. can be thicker, closer to the trunk. Just a few over to the side. Okay. And now the golden trumpet. Grab some more of this golden -y color. These are like more defined clusters of yellow flowers. So I'm just 
trying to give a little bit of shadow to some clusters to separate them, to define them. This one, we're going to come back in with some green and add some leaves to it in a little bit. This is still that golden yellow, that Nicolazzo yellow that I'm using. It's just a much higher, deeper value of it. this a little bit more behind this one. All right. So now we've got some trees in the background. We've got our stereo with our leaves. We have our red bud and golden trumpet a little more defined. I'm going to start putting some, where did it go? There it is. I'm going to start putting some blue bonnets down here. And I'm going to start with this round zero brush and the dioxazine purple dropping a little bit of this blue this is blues and purples all together So somebody asked a question somewhere, They're like, why is there always so many blue bonnets along the highways in Texas? And it's because Texas Department of Highways plants them when they go and do maintenance or clean up areas. So that they're always there. They are one of the best, one of the prettiest wildflowers, I think.
and it's one of those things in the spring you take the dogs out and you take pictures with the blue bonnets or you know the family if you do that but the same tall grasses that make it a wonderful environment for growing blue bonnets are also a great environment for snakes to hang out. So you got to be really careful. Safety first when you're going out and walking out along the blue bonnets. What I'm doing is I am prettying up the ground, but I'm also giving this a chance to dry so that when I start making the trunks of these trees, it's not just going to blur out into the rest of everything. It will actually be, um, you know, separate. Then I just swung my hand wide. Got some of that over there. Maybe we've got a few more of these to cover up that little spot that I accidentally... See, you can't even tell where I dripped water before. Because it's all been covered up. You know what else is really fun to do? Painting grass. I really enjoy doing that. I'm going to be doing some little grass lines in this in a little bit. After we get a couple of these other colors painted, I fear that I am just spending a lot of time on this painting, but I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing. Honestly. I left myself a little bit of time in the day to be able to do this. Dioxazine part was just really, really really strong. It's not necessarily a bad thing. But I do want to dilute it a bit with that. Blue. 
I'm doing a little bit of like smaller clusters lighter colors a little bit in the background to give us a little more depth all right that paper feels dry enough that I can start painting tree trunks this is gonna be so much fun Alright, so I've got that raw umber. Just pulling that out here. Alright. Where did I want those branches to go? And we've got foliage and trees that you're only really going to be seeing a little bit, a few branches, maybe not all of them. Let's get a little bit of shadow. Added here, just underside. And some of these branches it doesn't have to be detailed because it's not. I just want there to be a little more depth to it so it's not just one color. Let's see, we've got this guy. Let's do a few branches up here. know if there's any places where you'd be able to actually see where the branches go along here. Maybe we'll have a few that drop down. From the main branch and that's what we'll be able to see. gonna overwork that. I'm not gonna overdo it. Let's grab some this is burnt umber next to it. So it's a little bit redder. And I'm gonna be using that for my trunk on my red bud. So red buds are usually a bit of a skinny trunk until it gets to like one point and then they all branch out, they curve out from there. Oh, Ellen, I'm almost done. I think I am going to go make 
make sure she's okay. And then we'll come back and we'll do some grasses. All right. I'm going to grab some of this green that I've already mixed up and brought out here. I'm just going to do just some, some leaves on my tree. Just going to add a few leaves in here. around in between my flowers. So you can tell that it's a tree that has flowers. And I'm going to do the same with the red bud, but I'm going to use a different green. For that one, we're going to use this darker green. And we're not going to have as many leaves just a few of them I got a couple of blooming branches up there. All right, let's do some grass. This is one of my favorite tricks for grass is to take a brush with pretty stiff bristles like this. Make sure it's mostly dry. And then just pinch it. So it doesn't work with a completely dry brush, but with a mostly dry brush, then you've got these guys that you can use as a greener. Dip it in your green paint. Run it through. 
might have to reactivate your paint a little bit. But then you've got some nice grass that's not, sometimes when you use a grainer, the bristles are all like the same length and they go with the same direction. And then it just looks a little too like mechanical, you know, but when you spray it, splay it out with your fingernails, it's a little less planned and a little more organic looking on the page. And I'm not going to do a ton of this. I could sit here and paint grass for like an hour, literally an hour and be quite happy with that but I'm just gonna do enough right here at the front of this picture for us to like get the impression that there's gonna be some grass back there too you know there you go all right I think but that is enough detail for now, probably forever. If I overwork a painting, like put too much in, um, sometimes, you know, you get to this point where you're like, oh no, no, ruined it. So I'm gonna call that one good. I'm going to say that this picture of these flowering trees and this necklace with these flowering trees is done. And I will post a picture of both of these once this is dried, especially, but I'll paint, post a picture of both of these together on the community tab on my page. And, uh, and then you'll be able to see the whole thing. I'll also post a picture of this in the Beadbox Bargains Facebook group. So if you're a member of that, you'll be able to see it as well. But there we go. Some jewelry making, had some painting, and this was a very, very, very creative day for me. And I hope y'all are having a fantastic weekend. And if you're having some spring weather, I hope you're able to enjoy it. And happy beating. Bye!